Welcome to the Empowering Choices Podcast. My name is Joshua. I'm Lucas. And I'm Eric. Eric and Lucas are licensed professional counselors, and the title of today's show is Kicking and Screaming. And this will not be about the current election cycle and politicians. No. Despite the about appropriate, children. Despite the pop- possible <laughs> appropriateness of True. said... True. Yeah. So we you were we were talking about before the podcast that like like who does this apply to, right? Yeah. And Eric, you were saying that like this applies to kids, um, but like do teenagers never do this? Oh, sure they do. They do. Okay, but but we also don't want to talk about them. Well, it's not that we don't want to talk about them, but that's going to be an entirely different podcast because you're going to do generally different things. Yeah. So this is More this like is kicking and screaming, kids. tantruming behavior in ages up to seven. Seven, eight, maybe nine. We're talking about like grade school, yeah. early middle grade school. school. Yeah. 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 I went to a concert uh, on Friday night. My sister works at several schools uh, in the music department. And so we went to a junior high concert. But of course, there were families there with younger kids. Mm-hmm. And um, halfway during the show, this family was trying to leave. And this mom was trying to get the little girl to come with her. And the little girl is probably about seven or eight. She just lays on her. She gets on the floor, lays on the back, on her back. She literally is right. kicking and There's screaming. There's a reason that phrase and she's exists. going, no, no. And so I don't know <laughs> if you're going to tell us this is the thing to do or not. But then the grown mom in her like 30s uh-huh. proceeds to then get on her back and lay next, next to, to the her child. and goes, oh, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. And then <laughs> in the gets middle, up. Of, a middle performance? of a crowd. Well, like- okay, to be fair, this was kind of a weird thing because this was like an outdoor performance. But yes. And that in makes the- it better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not sure that changes much. <laughs> but yeah, in the middle of the aisle way, um, she does that. I mean, and this is why I'm watching it along with probably yeah. another hundred people in the yeah. area. Right. And then they, she's like grabs her kid and leaves. And that was her way of dealing with it. So the question is, is did her intervention <laughs> of lying on the floor next to her child ground, lying on the ground, did yeah. it make any difference as far as you could tell? It didn't appear to. Okay. Yeah. She um, didn't stop laying on the ground. Other than just game. everyone watching yeah. this grown woman now right. lay on the ground like a child. So my <laughs> I, I, oh man! It, you know what? What would have been hilarious to me, yeah, is if the people around would have started laying on the ground and kicking and screaming and saying, "I don't want to leave." Just, and then you had a hundred right. people. people. Yeah. Now the problem is not very respectful to the performers, people yeah. Yeah. that that are there. Yeah. You know, and that's a part of it in our culture. Is you know, you have etiquette. You have we, etiquette I think we've of lost performance. It. Well, we've lost right. it. It's interesting. I was watching um, Jeff Dunham, and uh, he had Walter out, and I think they're in Las Vegas. Yeah. And uh, the clip I saw is like Walter just looks out in the crowd and goes, "Where are you going?" <laughs> you know, and, and, and he's like, "What is he going to the bathroom? What? Where? Where are you going? I mean, don't you know there's a performance going on up here? <laughs> Holy cow! We'll wait." <laughs> wow yeah and, and so he's and and that is a part of some yeah. etiquette we could have used him at this concert you could have used him at this concert you know but it's i wish i had a better walter voice i'm gonna have to yeah, work that on been that great yeah i mean but, yeah there there was even there was even like a kindergartner watching some video of a man singing a britney spears song from like the playing. 90s and kept going over and over while there's like an orchestra playing. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm just thinking... And you could like, tell that they were watching it because the volume was on. Oh, yeah. Exactly. yeah. And I was just like, just to I want to go back there. And yeah. I True, See, right? this is but more yeah. what I kind of refer to as free range parenting. Yes. You're just free on the range to mm-hmm. do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it, it doesn't... It, it generally does not work. Now, I understand... That type of a technique in your home, and you might do that, mm-hmm. and and it could have you know a, a response to where the child stopped, but at different ages, it's going to have different impact, right? But it's still not going to be an appropriate thing to do in a community setting, <laughs> right? Something that the woman could have done, which is old school, like yeah, thousands of years old school is that you walk up and you understand that your child is being their age, two, three, Mm -hmm. somewhere in there, and you pick the child up. Yes, they will kick and they will will scream. They were already. And they were already. They're not going to stop because you picked them up, and you're going to just say, that's enough. We're going home now. I know you want to stay. We're going as you're going. 
yeah. as you're walking, yeah. as yeah. you're walking yeah. out. You might even say, sorry, guys, sorry, guys. Mm-hmm. And because culture's got to understand they're two. Right. They're three. We, we get it. They're learning as a child yeah. how to be able, because that's what a tantrum is. A tantrum right. is a way of trying to get your way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you just, you, you didn't like the answer. And mm-hmm. so you try to behavior to see if you could get your way. Yeah. She wanted to stay for whatever reason. I totally get it. Mm-hmm. Um, but to then mimic the behavior as an adult, mm-hmm. that's really a, like an intellectual, like uh-huh. the, the, if I break down what the parent was attempting to do, they were attempting to mock the child mm-hmm. and have them mm-hmm. change their behavior due mm-hmm. to the child's embarrassment. In- embarrassment. The child was already right. lying the- on the ground, <laughs> yeah. kicking and screaming. You weren't going to of embarrass everyone. them into changing. Right. right. That right. wasn't going to work. Yeah. And that's I why I say like the reasoning, but it's just, it's, it's yeah. not the right tool for the, right. for the problem. Yeah. And that's why I say in a, in a, Lim- in a in a more controlled setting, in, in a limited way, I have seen that the child kind of, but they have usually a little older, like, uh, and they're not getting it. And then they're like kind of giggle because mom or dad is doing mm-hmm. something yeah. funny and then it just kind of rolls out of that behavior. That's rare. Yeah. You know. Um, have you seen the cactus toy that imitates audio that it hears? Oh, yes. I think vaguely. Yeah. So it's, it's this toy that any audio that it hears, it will just like repeat it back. And there was a, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, a TikTok trend of putting one of those in front of your screaming child. Mm-hmm. And so that like the child will, Ooh, and the cat just goes, wee, 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 and dance. then it just, and it just loops, <laughs> yeah. right? So any audio that it hears, it picks back up. And for some children, it catches their attention of like, what's that? That's silly, right? Mm, and so, so it sometimes a, breaks the cycle. In our tools, we, that's a distraction. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because I don't could, really think that it's catching the child in the way of, oh, I see how stupid I look. I suspect right. that that's not what's causing them no. to stop the temper tantrum. And they're not going to think that way because their ego and their world thinking is not that big. Right. They right. they want what they want. If anyone in that crowd would get them to be able to stay, they won. That's mm, that's yeah. the employment of the tool of the tentacles of the tantrum is who will help me right. get what I want. Yeah. And and that's and if it'll work, it'll work and they'll be happy. Um, mm, briefly, I've also seen parents who will try to negotiate with a two or three year old mm-hmm. in a crowded room or in a church or whatever, and spend five minutes before they just finally give up. I, mm. I, I really, I mean, this may be old school, but you know, the United States used to be like, we don't negotiate with terrorists <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> right. So if he starts a doing something squirrely, I'm not going, yep. I'm, I'm bigger. I've got, I can pick them right up and there move them. And so we're going to be heading out. He may be crying on his way out, but when, but we're mm-hmm. going out. We're not going to talk about it. I don't understand At where two. we've gotten to the place where negotiation is somehow a tactic we use with a two-year-old. Yeah. Now. Mm-hmm. I totally get it. I was telling you guys earlier that there was a tantrum that was going on. I mean, the kid was like five or six and the parents are like, we can't make it stop. We can't make it stop. And he's yelling and he's getting louder. And I'm like, I can do it. (laughs) And they're like, okay. And so I just walked up to, to the little kid and I said, Hey, I give you 10 bucks if you stop. (laughs) And he looked at me and goes, really? I'm like, yeah, it's right here. He goes, (laughs) okay, I'm done. I hand him the 10 bucks. And, and, and that's probably nice. more the situation. And I'm not remembering the guy's name who did the the book on kid neurology. Right. Um, and he, he talks about no, don't negotiate with a terrorist. Exactly. But what he's talking about is he's talking about there's two different kinds of tantruming. He goes, there's the genuinely emotionally, like completely off the deep end, right, kind of tantruming. And then there's the the kid knows what they're doing yep. kind of tantruming. Exactly. And it's that second kind that he's talking about don't negotiate with a terrorist. And it sounds like... The story you just told is that kid kind of knew what he was doing. Oh, he knew totally. If you can stop your behavior at a moment's notice. Correct. You know, that's why, you know, like, you know, we're going to get into teenagers. I've heard um, people say, well, teenagers can't control their sex drive. And I'm like, sure they can. If they're making out on the couch and the parents' lights come through the window Mm -hmm. that they're home, suddenly things stop. Right. And that's a control, you know. And so... It, there's a lot of control that we don't give credit to at a variety of different ages. That was not my child. I kind of wanted the silence. 
they had put in all the work they could. And I'm like, yeah, I can end this. <laughs> I, I'm ending this for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not ending this for him. You know, you guys can work with him later on. With my child at, at the different ages, I'm not going to, you know, because I think a, a misconstrue of parenting today is that when I became a parent, I just gained another piece of the world that I can have as the cake and eat it too. And what I mean by that is when you became a parent, you are sacrificing certain things in life for the greater good of parenting the child. For instance, if I'm going to take my child somewhere, I have to weigh the cost of, I may not be there very long. Oh, if you do end up having yeah. that kicking, screaming, yeah. tantruming. Because my child might just decide, uh-uh, Bluey better, and <laughs> take me back to Bluey, you know? And so I have to add that into the cost. And so if I'm, you know, like in church and my child is beginning to tantrum, I'm not going to sit there and, and dell out the dollars. <laughs> um, I'm just going to go, okay, we're going to go. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, a, that's a part of the cost. Now, I can go into the back of the church, and we can hang out there because the churches have done right. really cool things and put speakers everywhere, mm -hmm. including the bathroom, by the way. <laughs> and um, and I, if that doesn't work, yeah. I can just remove the kid from church. We can go home, or we can go to the car, depending on the time of the year. We can go outside and walk. We can, we can do these different things that might help distract the child in a variety of different ways. Or I can just go home. Now, let's say that I really wanted to hear what they were talking about in the sermon in church. I'm just using that as an yeah. example. Do you know how much they record today? <laughs> right. You know, and so you count your cost. Know where you can get the things you can get if you really want to be there. If yeah. it's an outdoor concert, they're probably not going to record it. Maybe you have grandma watch the little guy. I was going right. to say, but if this was a school recording, how many cell phones were there recording that performance? Right. And, yeah. and so... 50. I yeah. didn't even think about that, but that's a different way that you could be able to get that recording later on. Right. What do you do, though, if your kid is in the house at a different variety of ages and they're throwing a tantrum? Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are some different things that can be done. First one is ignore it. It depends on the scenario. If, it's, if you don't have to go anywhere. If you don't have to go anywhere, because that is going somewhere can provoke a tantrum, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> the transition. Yeah. Yep. Don't take me away from Bluey. I don't want to put on my shoes. Didn't we do the first couple pa podcasts on something like that? Think so. I'm leaving the house. Yeah. Leaving the house. <laughs> yeah. I don't recall specifically, but I completely believe it. Yeah. We we commented on a uh, a woman who gave a lecture about her. Oh, right. Kids. That was in the car. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And so, yes, you're going to look at, you know, what what's going on. Are they safe? Right. Safe is another piece. Okay. So, you know, if they're, you know, the tantrum could be over. I want to touch the burn, the burner on the stove. Oh, <laughs> I, you know, I, I've, my brother would yeah. throw tantrums like that. <laughs> you know, he liked the color orange on that thing. He just, that was something I was like, he's going to touch it. I'm like, this is incredible. Interesting too. He's going to touch it. I can't mm -hmm. believe it. My mom even at one point sat down in front of the stove because she had whatever was going on the stove and she just became the barrier as he was throwing his little tantrum. Because he was throwing a temper tantrum trying to get to the stove. Yep. And there's oh stuff on the thing. So she's just becoming the barrier. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm, I'm taking notes. This is fascinating. You know, uh, an experiment going on right in front of me. Uh, here we go. Uh, will he make it through? Uh, <laughs> you know, and so you can become that barrier, you know, that's there for your child. I remember my nephew, he was throwing a huge tantrum one time. And uh, his grandpa um, had, they had sent him to uh, a room at, grandma's house because he was just way out of control and his grandpa went to um address it and um he went in the room he wouldn't talk to him he was just you know you know throwing a fit and you know throwing a few things and his grandpa is a pretty big guy so he just shut the door and sat on the inside of the room against the door mm -hmm. and he just let him know i'm just gonna wait yeah, i got I'm, all day i've done that a couple times in you my know? house and, yeah, and so, depends on what the scenario is. Right, because your kids have, um, they're going to have spurt energy. Mm -hmm. and, and the younger they are, the quicker it's going to burn out. And 
they don't have big picture thinking. You know, our manual talks about that. There's not, they don't know that this, your, your mm-hmm. intervention could go on forever. They have no, they think that they don't realize, wait, you might get tired. One of my, uh, my two year old, probably a week or two ago, uh, didn't want to stay in bed. And so she kept running out of her room. It was bedtime. Um, and so I'm like, okay, well, what are we going to do with this? And I was channeling my inner super nanny. Right. <laughs> um, and I just decided she's going to run out of the room and I'm not going to say anything. Cause I, I like the first couple of times I'm like, go back to your bed, kid. Um, then I'm like, I'm just going to go chase after her, pick her up, keep putting her back in her bed. Yep. <laughs> and at some point she just got so upset with the mere fact that I was doing that. Right. I remember she told my wife later, cause I think we ended up trading off or something. Um, cause I was just, I was actually calm at the time. Like I've gotten better with that. And I've just, I just, just calmly decided that she was just going to get picked up and put back in bed. And she reports to my wife later, like, I just wanted to leave my room. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, that wasn't what that was time for, kiddo. Yeah. Um, and, and my two year old is getting to the point where she's finally like, when I become stubborn enough, she'll be like, okay, fine. Right. And so you just kind of outlast them. You kind of have to be more stubborn than your kids sometimes. So do you guys know why a grown elephant cannot break the chains at a circus or a, a, any other place that might have them? It's not that they can't. It's that they believe them. <laughs> why do they believe they can't? Be- well, I mean, obviously, depending on the scenario, if they've lived with them their whole life, they yep. couldn't when they were smaller. Because when they were smaller, they could not break the mm. chain. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they tried and tried and tried. Mm-hmm. Now, as a full grown adult, they could snap that chain. Because if the chain never got any bigger. Yeah. Because yeah, it didn't. They, the same size chains. Hmm. But in their mind, the chain is unbreakable. Mm-hmm. And so, what you're doing and is. And an elephant doesn't do that, uh, what is it, raptor thing of keep testing the fences. Exactly. I- exactly. Because the um, raptors in Jurassic Park were like, I don't care. Right. I'm going to yeah, try yeah. and see if there's a <laughs> One of these days, there will be a weakness. We will find mm-hmm. it. Jack um, Russell Terrier dogs are that way. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, there are certain animals that are like that. Um, and, and so, what you're trying to do with your child is that you're trying to help them understand. No, when we as parents set the boundaries, the boundaries are there. I understand you don't want them. You don't like them. I don't fault you for that. Mm -hmm. But you don't have the big picture thinking to understand how good this is for you. You don't have the adult logic as a child. She just wanted to go out of her bedroom. Well, it it became, (laughs) yeah, it came literally just like daddy is picking me up and I don't like it. Right. I don't even think she knew anymore why she was originally trying to run out of her room. Well, but you wanted her to go to bed? To, st- to stay in her bed, yeah. Yeah. And, and so for whatever good reason you had for that, she doesn't understand it because she mm-hmm. doesn't have the logic. Mm-hmm. And, and that's okay. I don't fault that. That's on us because we're going to explain that throughout their lives growing up. They'll see it as they get older and older, as they're gaining more reasoning. It'll take more color year after year after year. But the fact that they go, okay, well, you said don't do this, and I've gone down this road, and this chain mm-hmm. doesn't break, and okay, I won't do it. Mm-hmm. You're, you want them to get to that place where they know, no, I have to listen to the authority in my life, because this is not being mean. This is not being us meany parents. Mm-hmm. This is you looking out for your child because they don't have the brain capacity to look out for themselves. Well, that's like with your brother, right? Was your mom being mean by keeping him from not touching the orange stove burner? Some people might say so. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, no. Yeah. You and do irreparable damage by touching a stove burner. Did he eventually make it to the burner? Well, yeah. my mom, one of the techniques that they had in, in that day, and it's so it's old school, is that... You know, if a child is so relentless, when there's nothing on the stove, you might let them touch it a little bit to realize, no, don't touch, you know, and but it, you've got to know your child. And so he did touch it and he never touched it again oh. after that. <laughs> Probably wasn't on very high. No, no. And that's the thing. You don't turn it up to full and go grab a hold of that there. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, you're never going to do that again. I'll tell you right now. Yeah, that's because you won't have a hand. Well, exactly. You know, and it generally a kid is going to be touching with like a finger or something, yeah. you know, Fair um, enough. we don't apply the same logic to light sockets. 
Mm-hmm. Right, right, you know, wood chippers. Or, right, you know, hey, go out there and play with that. If the ball goes in, just go after it. Push the button first. You know, it, you're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that, that whole safety part that you're looking yeah. at. Uh, distractions. Distractions are another thing. So we'll go back Those to ignoring. so hard to remember to, to pull off, to not get hooked into the kid's temper tantrum. It, it, and it, that's a great thing right there that you brought up because yes, you, you have to work on yourself and you have to know your own hooks and your own soft spots and the places, because the reason why you have to know yourself better than your child is because your child is going to get to know all your soft spots. And so if you know your soft spots and where they're at and your buttons, and uh, then you can create some defenses that they go to push those buttons and you go, nope, not today. Nope, not going to happen. Nope, you don't get to touch that one. And, you know, and you can you can avoid being hooked an awful lot. Um, ignoring. So just if it's you don't have a place to go, and if uh, nobody's in danger, you can ignore that tantrum. You might address it every once in a while, depending on how old the child is, and just say, are you done yet? Um, uh, you can be done now. Uh, okay, it's time to stop um, and just see. Now, if you begin to see that your child is just, maybe the tantrum is out of being tired. Mm-hmm. When they are less and less flailing, you might just pick them up and go, okay, why don't you uh, lay down? Let's let's go for a nap, you know, and you can transition them to a place and they may, you know, just fall asleep at that point. But let's say your child's a little older and they're throwing a tantrum. And you know that they like skateboarding and you just happen to have, happen to have, (laughs) these are things you might want to set up because, you know, I've done this in treatment centers. I had an entire closet of different things that were for different kids that were just right in there when they were going to, that's the teenage part Mm -hmm. though. we'll go there later. And you might just bring out that skateboarding magazine and they're throwing a tantrum and you're sitting there reading it. (laughs) But you're, you're more reading it like this mm-hmm. to where you've mm-hmm. got the pictures that are going and you're looking at it and you're going through. You're not engaging the child. Yeah. You're not going, oh, what do you think about this? Because with a lot of kids, the minute you do that, they're on to you. Yep. Okay. But you may be just engaging it and they sneak peeks and they're like, oh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> oh, wow. And then all of a sudden you might hear, can I look at that? <laughs> now... You have them in a place where you can say, hey, yeah, you could look at this. Are you, why don't you come up here and let's talk about what just happened? Mm-hmm. You know, let's talk about why are you on the floor? I don't understand. I already mopped. I mean, were you trying to help by being the human mop? What, what were you doing? You know, I hold this broomstick. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, or duster, you know. And, and so a lot of times kids will be like, you know, okay, here's what was going on. Um, It depends on the age. A two-year-old? No. Um, And then if we can, uh, because you mentioned you did uh, Super Nanny, you know, with your daughter. Any way we can bring up any kind of a link for that, you know, along this this podcast part for the Super Nanny? Joe has wonderful, wonderful types of techniques for um, not just tantruming, but so many different things. She is a behavioralist. It's um, apparently supernanny.com. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So if we can bring that up and show that, that'd be great. Um, but, you know, you'll gain a lot of tools from that right there. If your child is, I mean, even, you know, first three grades, if there is something that you know, something maybe you own that they admire, they like to play with, they like to look at something that they own, Something they want. I mean, having pictures, bringing the object out. Um, if you know they like your favorite stuffy you had from a child and you just kind of bring that out and you're just kind of playing mm-hmm. with that, that can create distractions. You know, because what mm-hmm. you're trying to do is get them connected to something else so that their emotions will begin to go back down. Yeah. And the key thing, because you had mentioned that, like with your daughter, you're just, you're not engaging with her. Um, I had a parent that was having a problem with one of his kids in session and he had her go into mm-hmm. timeout and she was looking for every soft mm-hmm. spot she had previously marked and she was hitting <laughs> them all 
in note and bam, bam, bam. And I just sat there and I went, are you going to bite on that? Are mm -hmm. you really going to mm -hmm. go for that? She's just trying to keep you engaged in the argument so she can keep her emotions at here. Right. But if you don't engage with her and he's like, well, what do I say? You say what you said in the beginning, Sally, you need to, you need to be, you're in timeout and you need to quiet down and then I will talk to you. Mm -hmm. And that's what you say. Well, she keeps saying she doesn't know why she's in timeout. She knows why she's in timeout. Don't buy it. That's, mm -hmm. that's a soft spot. You're, you're a good talker. She wants to engage you mm -hmm. in order to drain you, in order to get her way and have the upper hand on her little sister. It's, it's real simple psychology. Just don't engage. And he didn't. And she came down. And all of a sudden, you know, we're talking about different things. And you just heard Sally's little voice go, can I come over and sit on the couch? And then her dad turned to her and said, are we going to be able to talk about this? And she said, yes. And she came over and it wasn't any more of why are you in timeout? It was, these are the things that is not okay for you to do. Mm -hmm. You Real don't classic do these timeout, things. Yep. Uh, kind of debrief. Exactly. You're so, going into timeout because yep. of this. You have to be in timeout. You were in timeout because of this. Okay, now be a human again. Right. And like with Joe, Joe doesn't promote big discussions when you're bringing a child out of timeout. You just say, why were you in timeout? Okay, can you come back? Great, let's go. Right. You know, don't, don't do that again. Yeah. Don't do that again. You know, because lectures are not a, a viable way to work with kids, at, especially younger and younger ages. You know, so you've got the distraction. You, you've also got another piece where you can... Um, you can begin to remind the child, hey, listen, you know, especially if they're older, this isn't going to work so much for a two-year-old. Um, but if the child is older, you begin to remind them of, hey, you have privileges and you're throwing a tantrum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to play your Xbox later. You're going to want to play your PS5 later. You're going to ask me to go to Jimmy's house later. What do you think I'm going to say if you're throwing a tantrum right now? You know, let's... I'm just, I'm just reminding you, yeah. I'm giving you these choices. You know, you have to follow through with that if you draw those lines. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, then he comes back later and goes, hey, can I play my PS5? No, you threw a tantrum for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. You lost that. What, what happens to the kids whose parents are kind of like, oh, we don't want little Johnny to be so upset. So they, their response is usually always just fixing whatever the kid is mad about. And mm -hmm. they, they do that a bunch. And then eventually... They're going to hit something that they can't fix or they can't satisfy. Like, what, have what road does that send you down? See, I, I never go quite that direction. Yeah. What I do is go, okay, I get it. You do, you want to fix his emotions or her emotions. You yeah. don't want them to be upset. Now, at 23, are you going to be able to fix it like this? Because yeah. there, this is what happens. You're, if you're, sure. if this is what you're doing now, <laughs> right? Imagine a 23 year old woman who is still a five year old fit thrower, and what she's gonna get from you. Because yeah. I guarantee you, I'm not gonna want to work with you at that point. Right. I um, saw that video. It involved the police and like an entire body bag restraint. Right. Yeah. 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 So I mean, these are like the people that have the meltdown at Burger King and McDonald's, yeah, right? Exactly. Because they <laughs> you didn't. Know. Uh, the the tantrum I don't fault the child for, I it, the tantrum is a way of trying to test the boundaries and yeah. get their way. The stronger the will, although I didn't throw tantrums, but I did <laughs> other things, the more you're going to look to gain the control. Once you learn you can gain the control, it will simply be reinforced and reinforced and reinforced and reinforced. If you mm -hmm. become an adult and you've always gotten your way reinforced. Mm -hmm. It's a nightmare for your coworkers and any other family members that you pick up along the way. Yeah. What I'm going to say is, you know, and I've had this where it's like tears are a big one. In this culture, men don't like tears. In this culture, men will sell everything they own right up to their soul to <laughs> make it stop crying. I totally get it. What men have to do is get comfortable with tears. There, it's not about us and it doesn't have to be uncomfortable because one of the things I run into is that tears, like I've seen fathers who have sons and tears in a board game come out when 
someone makes a good move and the child is about to or now losing. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm like, that's fascinating. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'll stop the whole game and go, no, no, no. Okay, wait. Listen, I understand you're upset. I understand that, you know, you're having a hard time with this move, but you would totally do this move if you had the opportunity. And crying, they'll go, yes, I would. <laughs> it's a good move. It's mm-hmm. a legal move. It just means they're losing. It just means they're losing, mm-hmm. you know. And the smarter your child is, they have Asperger's, they have mm-hmm. autism, and you're going to have this struggles even more. To the dad, I will say, you got to you got to stop this. Because the dad, once the tears came out, is undoing mm-hmm. the move they just made. I'm like, no, 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 no. You can't do that. You have to get that money back. You have to put your piece where it should go. You have to do that move because here's the deal. What happens when your child is playing with their peers and someone makes a great move mm-hmm. and now, and the dad goes, oh yeah, no, that's not good. <laughs> you know, And that's the yeah. thing is that you have to picture the big picture for your child. What they're going to do with you, they're going to do with other people it will make them targets. It mm-hmm. will make them ostracized. It will make people not want to, you know, play games with them or have fun with them. They'll be limited. And so, no, you just, you have to work with that situation as you have it right. and teach your child, hey, look, that was a great move. I guess I made it, but that was a great move. Next time you may be able to make it. Yeah. So all of those better options than getting on the floor and mimicking your child at a concert in front of everybody as they watch and wonder what's happening. <laughs> that's, that would, that's my summary of, uh, of today. Bring so, it back full circle, Josh. Yeah. If there I could, go. uh, distribute this podcast back at that concert, maybe it would have been a go. better experience. So perfect. Well, yeah, this was some great stuff. And if you, um, enjoyed this, we'd love to hear what you think down in the comments. Uh, so make sure on whatever platform you're listening to, uh, to give us a review and a like, and then definitely check out our website at empoweringchoices.community where we have more courses and information just like this. We'll see you on the next show. And if this video gets 5,000 likes, Josh will throw a temper tantrum on the floor. I will. No, no, oh. no, no, <laughs> oh, no, 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 we, we need more likes first. Yeah. That's we, we like can't give 10, it away early. Like, like, like. <laughs> yeah. I'm at five. You're at 10. You're at 15. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs>